let me start from the start. <laughs> yes. So in 2018, I began to feel very, very lost, like purposeless. Mm. And I started to ask God questions like, why am I here? You know, those existential yeah, yeah, yeah. questions, yeah. you know, so I went on a three day fast and I began to pray, you know, like, God, what am I doing here? You what? already knew Christ. I already knew Christ to an extent. I grew up in a, in a um, Christian home, but... I didn't have a deep relationship with Christ. Uh, what I had was a third party relationship. Uh, so I uh, used to outsource my spirituality. <laughs> Some people want to know. What I mean is I accessed God through the spiritual leaders I uh-huh. had. I accessed uh-huh. God through people who I thought were spiritual uh-huh. enough. You that's know. why I wanted you to Yes, that. that's what I mean by third party. <laughs> so I grew up in that sort of environment, very religious, devotional type thing, but I didn't really know God. But in 2018, I met someone who seemed to know God Uh. and he used to talk about God all the time. And I I was just blown away. Like, who is this guy? Who are you? He used to talk about God like God was his friend sitting next to him. And I had a concept of God, like some old guy with a white long beard, (laughs) high up in the sky. You know that I had that. Yes, a throne. So there was that distance, you you know, in my mind. But he always used to talk about God like God was close. So I got curious, you know. So I, I, I remember him saying, "Oh, the Holy Spirit is a person. All you need to do is just talk like you are talking to me." So one day I went home and I began talking. Just I was sitting on my bed. And I'll just talk to the air, talk to the wall, just talk like I'm actually talking Mm. to a person. And that's how my sort of intimacy with God started. Mm. And then when I did the fast, God gave me a very, a very directional and instructional dream showing me what my calling was, Mm. you know, and that I will say that's the beginning of my journey. Wow. You know, he showed me where, where I fit in, in the body of Christ, mm. where like, am I an eye, am I a leg? Wow. You know, he showed me all of that very quite clearly. And then, um, as time went on, I began to dream. Dreams are like, uh, the primary way through which God speaks to me. Mm. Very symbolic, fantastical, apocalyptical mm. type of dreams, mm. you know? And then when I recognized that, okay, c- cause I've been a dreamer all my life, but I didn't know that God was speaking to me through those dreams. Okay. But when, <laughs> but when I came into that intimacy, it became clearer, mm. you know? So I started taking time out to actually write my dreams down, taking time to search out meaning, and search out purpose through Mm. those dreams and god began to speak to me Mm. earlier in the year um god asked me to just before the lockdown to stop all activities um drop my work everything i was doing and just sit with him and at the time i thought it would just be like two weeks Mm. but then he extended to like i mean to like june (laughs) so i was on lockdown before the lockdown i wasn't earning any money i wasn't going anywhere i was just at home you know and then you were being fed I was being fed <laughs> and incidentally um god made provision for me in exactly. terms of actual money exactly. like people were sending me money for no reason and i wasn't working you know so this year has been quite a testimony so um i sat there just praying asking god questions studying worshiping and god began to give me more dreams about the body of christ he began to show me stuff about certain men of god he began to show me things about great pastors of mega churches and here i am small me i really don't know anything why is he showing me all of this you know so i began to pray for them like like their weaknesses and things like that so i began to pray for them there's this particular pastor i i actually like i would have tears in my eyes i'll kneel down in the middle of my room and pray for this man and one day i heard the word abortion and I just wrote it down and carried on. Like, okay, this is something that God wants me to talk about at some point. Three weeks after, I was praying for this same pastor. I heard the word again loud and clear. Mm. Abortion. Whoa. And I knew that that was God tell, telling me to tell my own story. So it's like, when I look back, I realize that what God was doing is, I'm not showing you stuff about these men so that you can judge them. Mm. Uh. I want you to have compassion for them by showing Mm. you your own humanity. So God began to show me my own weaknesses. Mm. So like you, you are here. Mm. Hi, I'm mighty. Pray for pastor. Mm -hmm. What about you? (laughs) You know, that was the way it came to me. And then Mm. I remember just sitting on my bed. I stopped the prayer. (laughs) I grabbed my phone. (laughs) I, as, as soon as I began to type the words, just, just came out of me. 
I typed everything out, but it took me about a week before I posted it on Instagram. Mm. I remember posting it and just weeping that day. Like, even no one, nobody, like maybe one person knew that I had had an abortion. My family didn't know, but here is God telling me to post it for the world to see. You know, so it was, it was, it was painful, but it was very freeing. You know, I remember posting and just thinking, wait, my mother doesn't know. It's better I tell her now before she because, finds yes. out. You know, so I remember calling my mom and just aside and just telling her, oh, I just posted. I just, um, this is what happened to me back then. She just asked me, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. She's like, are you sure? Like, I'm fine. But I didn't tell her I posted it online. Eventually she found out and yes. she's like, don't you think you need to be careful? Uh-huh. You know, I'm like, but mom, God asked me to yeah. post it. She's like, hey, I know, but don't you think you need to be careful? <laughs> you know, I would, I, I would have thought that, you know. but she's a parent, so yeah, I understood where she, she was coming to. from. Yeah. I just smiled and moved on. But I remember that day, people calling me all sorts of calls. There were people saying, oh, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm-hmm. But there were other people who were saying, eh, Delphine, I have mixed feelings yeah. about the story you shared. What if one day you want to run for office? Uh-huh. <laughs> Won't somebody that use it all, against you? That. And in my head, I'm like, they can't use it against me because I've already put it out there. Like, uh, how do you want to use it against me? It's no longer... Exactly. It's no longer a tool of blackmail. Exactly. The devil can't use it to hold you any longer. because you. Delphine, you know what we are going to do now? We are going to go on a very short break. And when we come back from that break, we are going to share people with people your abortion story. Mm-hmm. Because I sense in my spirit right now that there's someone right now in that space mm-hmm. that doesn't know what to do. And because, you know, uh, mm-hmm. what I can see from your story was that what led to your encounter with God was that hunger. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, if there had been no hunger, mm. you still have been in the same place. Mm, yeah. Because God is a gentle man. But it was a hunger that uh, led to everything that you've encountered with God. So we'll go on a short break now. And when we come... Yeah. All right. So, Delphineto, oh, we want you to share that abortion encounter with people, mm. how it happened, mm. and how God came through for you. Mm. Okay, so um, it happened when I was in uni. I was in my third year and I was dating this guy and um, it's, we're having premarital sex. Duh. So <laughs> I remember when I found out that I was pregnant, it, it felt like, oh my gosh, mm. like, you know how growing up, you, you always heard, don't like, mm. don't even, don't even dare mm-hmm. bring a pregnancy. <laughs> you know, my mother never had that talk with me, but I knew it was an African parent thing. You know, so I, I thought about it more from a clinical point of view, from a very logical place. I didn't want to think emotionally. I didn't, I, di- I knew that it was wrong, but um, I was thinking very practically. I'm in school. I have no job. How am I going to take care of a child? I'm not married to this guy. The shame that comes with it, all of that stuff. So um, after we discussed, we decided that we were going to terminate it. And I remember... I remember being wheeled into the into the theater, you know, and then I was giving anesthesia and waking up and just feeling empty, mm. you know. Um, I remember back then, I I was numb. I didn't want to think about it. I didn't even, like, I pushed it to the back of my mind. I never really paid attention to how I was feeling because I didn't want to feel, you know. And um, I remember not even telling anyone. So it was just between me and the guy, you know, and when I didn't end up marrying him, one of my biggest fears was that one day I'm going to have to tell the person I'll get married to that I had an abortion, Mm -hmm. not knowing that God was setting me up for Mm -hmm. telling the whole world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was worried about husband. (laughs) I didn't know that God, like God was waiting for me in the future, you know? So when I had that encounter where I knew that it's time to share this story Mm -hmm. before then, I had started sharing, um, what was, what was I even really sharing? I had shared stuff about trust, about, um, how God was, was calling me out on my diet, you mm. know, just really mm. peripheral yeah, stuff. Things, and then yeah. boom, abortion, <laughs> you know, like everyone's yeah. like, wait, 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 what do Like, this is too much, right. you know? So th- there was mixed reactions, you know, and I understood it, you know, um, I got flack from church people. Oh, <laughs> I got flack from family members. I got flack from, I mean, the world, you know, 
but then i also got incredible feedback there were people in my dms talking about how they were in the same situation and they made a different choice because of the story i shared you know and god began to show me how he began to speak to me about the power of a testimony Mm. you know that scripture that says we overcame the devil by the word of our our, the words of our by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony he began to show me the power that backs up a testimony when god pushes you to say something is backed up with the power of god you know and then people started to reach out to me people started to tell me about their lives like I became like some sort of <laughs> therapist, you know, like it was overwhelming. Yes. I was just getting all sorts of stories in my DMs, you know, this happened to me and that happened to me. Mm. And that was just one story. And then God began to move my heart. Okay. So what led to the abortion, sexual sin? I did a three part series on sexual sin, like literally my whole life Can you imagine out that? in the open. And I was just sharing story after story. God led me to share about anger. He let me share about offense, just everything that you could say was my weakness Mm. you know like just out there in the open it was excruciating like i felt so transparent like everyone could see right through me so open and bare you know but i realize now that god was setting me up for um preparing me for what he wanted to use me Mm. for so it wasn't just sharing my story in order for others to heal but also for myself to heal Mm. because now i know that god has thrust me into public ministry mm. so imagine if i was holding on to all Look of that baggage that, yes. the devil would have something on to me on. but now it's like the whole world knows what i did the whole world so knows what nothing. i have come through yes. you know so there's nothing that the devil can use mm. like with his wagging condemning finger to get, <laughs> condemn me you yeah, know like and also you know how um people get thrust into ministry and their past comes back to haunt mm. them it's like god was showing me that no, there's nothing there's to nothing. hold you because you've said it all. Yes. Uh-huh. You know, so that's kind of like my intro. That was my introduction to ministry. Uh-huh. It's like you have to be open and bare. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be transparent, mm-hmm. you know. And then God will use that pain. There's power in your pain. There's a message in your mess. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. That's yeah. Much so, you, you know, from what we are sharing with me now and from what Lady was sharing during the break, uh, it's very obvious that the message of the end time church is that vulnerability. Mm-hmm. The vulnerability achieves two things. It sets you free. Then it also sets other people free. Absolutely. Then it also takes away the devil's power to condemn mm. and to bring accusations mm-hmm. against you. Now, shortly after you did the abortion, did you feel judged? Did you um, feel condemned? Were you did, were you in a very bad place? Okay, so let me. Ex- it was kind of like reversed. I don't know how to explain this, but I'll try my best to find the words. So because I didn't want to think about it, I became numb. Mm. Then I started feeling bad for not feeling bad about mm. the abortion. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, yes. It, does. it makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. That's where I was. So it was, it was like, like I'm supposed to feel pain. I'm supposed to feel I lost a child, yes. but why don't I feel that? So I began to feel guilty for not feeling bad. So it was as if your conscience was dead. Yes. You now began to feel guilty for, for having, having a, a dead, dead conscience. conscience. Exactly. Which was exactly where the devil wanted exactly. you to be. Mm-hmm. But you see, in my short walk, I've discovered something. We don't have grace for premarital sex, mm. but we have grace not to do it. Yeah, and we also have grace to build us up when we fall. Mm-hmm. Because you, you see, if you look at the Bible, it says we are sin abounds grace, grace mm. abounds much more. Mm. So sin is destructive. Yes, sir. It tries to destroy us. But in that destruction, grace comes in, yeah. takes us out, builds us up, then gives us a fresh start. I believe that if you did not share that story, you won't have this ministry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I see that very clearly. Mm. So that's the work of grace. And I know that there's somebody listening right now mm. that maybe you are about to have an abortion or you've had it. And you feel that your life is messed up. Mm. But I want you to know that God is a God of second yes, chances. Sir. 
He's not even a he's God of second God chance. Of chances. A God of limitless <laughs> chances. Of chances. Absolutely. Limitless chances. Because uh, when our son was learning to walk oh. 13 years ago, many times he fell down. Yes. But each time we were more concerned about him falling down that, than even he himself was. Mm. And that's exactly the way so, God relates so. with us. Yeah. When we fall, he's bothered because he's a caring father. Oh, yeah. he, is not trying to judge us but he wants to help us so uh delphi now when you see people going through the same stuffs abortion how do you feel towards them honestly compassion mm. because it's one thing to have a to lord it lord something over someone but when you realize what you have done yes, in the you past did that. <laughs> you know like yeah. you you know that scripture that says we have not a high priest yes, who is not, not touched by yeah, the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus could feel compassion because he became man. Mm. You know, so it's like I've been there, so I know what you're feeling, and yes, and, and as such, I'm able to relate with yes, you in that way. Yes. So mm. yeah. Mm. So in the in the present and in the future, uh, are you going to have a kind of healing ministry? Because you know. What the devil does is that uh, he takes that sin, then brings in judgment. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you see, one of the scriptures the devil have, has used to really run people mad is uh, 1 John 1 9. If we say we have no sin, yeah. it's, a, it's a scripture uh, that is going <laughs> to set free. Yeah. <laughs> The devil has used yeah. that scripture yeah. to land a lot of people in the sanatorium yeah. <laughs> because he believes, it tells them that you must confess it over and over and over again. Right. So people keep looking for right. lots of th things and I've seen a lot of people actually think they've committed the unpardonable yes. sin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You understand? Uh -huh. yeah. And you know, from my understanding of the Bible, a believer can't commit that sin. Mm. True. Because it's about consistently giving glory that is due to God to the devil. Mm. So a believer can't commit I that don't sin. So. Yeah. No, you can't even commit it. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not. <laughs> no, you, you, you can't. You, you, do you know do you know the scripture that says uh uh a child of God cannot commit sin? Yes, uh, a child of God does not sin. Does that's not in sin or first he's in first John as that's well. First yes. John does not. A child of God does not sin. So what John was trying to say is this as a child of God who has encountered God, you don't make sin a habit. A habit, yes. Lifestyle. Yes. So okay. that's what amplified. Maybe, yeah. So I want you to leave a message with people listening to us who have had encounters with abortion i just want you to leave a message for them a message of encouragement because some of them might be going through stuff they might be feeling judged they might be feeling that they might not be able to have a baby again so i just mm. want you to leave a word of encouragement with them um i just like to say that <laughs> this sounds very rudimental very um kindergarten very <laughs> nursery school where <laughs> jesus loves you <laughs> yes yes you know, the greatest message. yes, Jesus really yes. loves you. If you realize that the lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth, wow, before like before yeah. the earth came into yeah. being, before mm. Adam was created, yeah. before it even entered into Eve's mind yes. to eat that fruit, before your parents ah. were born, mm. before you were mm. conceived, before you committed abortion. Jesus Christ already paid the price. Wow, wow. You know, if you, you remember that, that, that <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves me. This I know. If you remember that, wow. if you remember that, if you remember that, you can't stand judged or condemned Ooh, by wow, anything, wow. any thought, anyone, any person. You know, wow. because he did all of that just for you before you even thought to commit a sin. So I just want you to keep that in mind for those who are actually on the crossroads mm. you're thinking how am i going to take care of the child if i don't terminate it what will people say um think about what will jesus say yes. wow. at the end of the day he's the one he's the one who matters you're the one that's gonna stand by the white throne <laughs> of judgment yes. one day and give account for all the things that you have done yes. and i dare say that this one is very very precious in god's sight the babies are very precious to yes. god wow. there's there's currently a genocide yeah. going on in the world of children. Yeah. We speak about um, 
um, black men being killed because of racism? What about babies being killed? Mm -hmm. You know, I saw something yesterday on a satire page. Um, the Democrats are, are basically rallying around um, inmates that have been giving the death row and they're they are, um, fighting for them to save their lives. Mm -hmm. And somebody came and said, what about the babies? Mm -hmm. How come you guys are pro-life when it comes to people on death row? Why are you not pro-life when it comes to and, children? And what you just said when you were talking about love, it's you you simply preach the whole gospel the whole gospel yeah. because the gospel is about his love uh, because when you when we look at ourselves there's nothing worthy about us absolutely it's only love see if i die for a good person i'll feel justified mm. but you die for a betrayer a sinner who is worth nothing so i always tell people we are not righteous because of what we do, mm. but because of what Christ has done. Yeah. So you know what Christ is? He took us, as dirty and as filthy as we were, He took us, cleaned us, and then made us righteous. Yeah. He loved us, washed us, cleaned us, and then made us righteous. Yeah. That's that's the whole thing. Yeah. So, Delfinito, thank you for coming out of your bit busy schedule to be a blessing to someone and i know that someone who is struggling with uh, uh with abortion after effects delfinator says know that jesus loves you mm -hmm. and don't run away from him run to him absolutely because he's the only one who can help you